Hello there, internet friends. Today we're going to talk about something I became aware of over the course of the last year, and it's called mental dieting. But before we get into this, I'd like you to picture the following scenario and see if you can relate. Imagine the alarm clock on your phone goes off at 6 a.m., and after hitting the snooze button once or twice, you muster up the get up and go to sit up and survey your surroundings. As you sit on the edge of your bed, groggy-eyed and yawning, you unplug your phone and bring it in close for further inspection. As your screen slowly starts to come into focus, you notice a bunch of emails from work and several from your boss. Ugh, here we go, you think to yourself, and move your attention to your Facebook and Twitter notifications. Four new followers on Twitter and someone liked my Facebook post. Nice, you think to yourself. The dopamine hits from the social media positive feedback loop offsets the mild anxiety of the work emails, and so you begin your trek to the kitchen to brew a pot of extra strong coffee. On the way, you pass the study which has been converted to a home office and see your significant other half-dressed and on the computer, phone in hand and deep into what appears to be a Zoom conference call. As you shuffle by, your eyes meet for a moment and a smile is exchanged. Upon entering the kitchen, without thinking, you hear yourself say, Alexa, put on NPR, and notice coffee has already been brewed. So you grab your favorite mug, pour some hot brew, and sit down at the kitchen table and begin tending to your phone while listening to the latest political debacle on NPR. Now, this scenario probably sounds somewhat familiar to you, and keep in mind, this whole scenario is taking place within the first five minutes of your day. So when I mention mental dieting, it's probably not going to take you too long to figure out what I mean by this. Consider this for a moment. When it comes to what we eat and drink, most of us are very conscious of what we take into our bodies and can be very picky about what we choose to consume. However, when it comes to what we consume mentally, we have a tendency to allow in all kinds of unhealthy mental foods. Now, you may say to yourself, well, I have a good filter and ignore the things that don't follow logic or line up with my own personal ideologies. And that might be the case. But the thing is, if I tell you to imagine a pink elephant, you can't stop yourself from seeing a pink elephant in your head. So although our filters may be fairly well dialed in, the filter doesn't stop the pink elephant from taking up residence in your mind's eye. So, to prevent this, you gotta attack it from the source from which it emanates, and this is the beginning of what I call a mental diet. I recently watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, and although I had my suspicions about the tech giants, any lingering doubt in regards to how my data is used against me no longer exists. On one side of the screen is me, and on the other side, thousands of brilliant engineers using various algorithms and artificial intelligence who, honestly, in the end, see me as nothing more than an ATM machine. Like they said, if you're not buying the product, you are the product. Think about this. We live in a world that consists of an economy sustained by transactions. These transactions are done by people such as you and me. The game played in this economy is to wake up every day and set forth about our work, profession, or passion with the hope of receiving the maximized fiduciary recompense. On the other side of the equation lies the rest of the world seeking to do pretty much the same thing. In order for the rest of the world to maximize their fiduciary recompense, they must come up with incredibly creative, innovative, intelligent, crafty, and even deceitful ways to extract from your fiduciary gain. I would like to deny the reality of this equation, but unfortunately, I suspect there's a lot of truth to it. You see, we live in an age of information where we are constantly bombarded from every direction in a fight for our attention, with the end goal of extracting any and all of your fiduciary gain. You are reduced to nothing more than a firewall that simply needs to be overcome. The point of telling you all this is to highlight the unfair advantage being wielded over us in the age of information, or actually, it might be more appropriate to call it the age of distraction. 
But hope is not all lost. There might be a way to even the playing field. A way to put the brakes on the age of distraction. A way to take back control. It's not a big idea. It's actually pretty simple. It's a matter of exercising a little bit of discipline and instituting a mental diet. Now, there's no hard and fast rule to starting and maintaining a mental diet. It simply begins with your awareness and acknowledgement of the problem and your power over it. What type of controls you implement will depend on you, your lifestyle, and what is tolerable. For me, I started by putting my phone and notifications on silent. No ringing, no vibrating, no chirping, no nothing. I choose when to interact with my phone and not the other way around. This is a little off-putting for family, friends, and business interactions, and sometimes I miss out on some things, but oh well, what can I tell you? It keeps me sane. I unplugged Alexa, and I can't tell you how peaceful my mornings are now without the negative news fix I was so used to. I also don't touch my phone until I've had breakfast and a shower. Now, these changes aren't too extreme, little by slowly I say, but I highly recommend you give it a try. I promise your mental health will improve, as well as your personal economy. The one thing I haven't been able to get rid of is that darn pink elephant. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Till next time, thanks and God bless.